Today, we're going to have an interview with a Portrait Artist of the Year contestant. Her name is Hannah Broadhead, and she was willing to talk to me. She was on season 10. But if you would, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe. YouTube loves that. And now let's go ahead and let's get started. But first, I just want to show a little bit of Hannah's work because my editing skills are not perfect and I wasn't able to put these images in where I wanted to in the interview, but I wanted to make sure that, that this interview is about her. This is a submission that got her onto, her pro, onto the program and she had submitted to be an artist on the program, I, I believe, three other times. So this was her fourth time. This is taken from her website and I put a link below and also links uh, throughout this video so you can go ahead and look at more of her work. She's much more than a portrait artist. She does all kinds of work including watercolor and some really interesting imagery. Okay, I'm so excited because a real person <laughs> was willing to speak with me about Portrait Arts of the Year. And what I mean by real person, of course, is that this is someone, uh, Hannah Broadhead, who has participated in the program and also has um, applied and can tell us about that, that process. Um, the reason I thought that Hannah might be open to this was I joined a Facebook group, which is about Portrait Artist of the Year and Landscape Artist of the Year. And she posted uh, a painting that she had done that had been not accepted for 2024, I believe. And, and that, is that correct? That one. I, you can't apply if you've been on one series. You can't apply until two years later. Oh, two years so, later. So oh. that picture that you, yeah. So that, that picture that you saw was just how my work's evolved, really. Oh, nice. Okay. So <laughs> that took me to your blog because you had a posting there about your uh, experience being on the program, and the phrase that caught me that said, oh, I want to talk to this person, was you said you were so nervous that you needed some rescue remedy. And I have animals. That's something you use for animals to help them through thunderstorms. And I said, okay, I get her sense of humor. So <laughs> I want to speak with her. So can you tell people, our, the people that we're talking to are, are fans of the program, for all, despite its issues. <laughs> so tell us about, about you, where you live, your work, kind of how you got here? <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, I, do you, I um, finished university in 2007, so a long time ago. Um, and then it was a case of, like my, a lot of artists, if you live outside of London, you, you get jobs. So I had a job for a good long time. And then the last two or three years I was thinking right I'm getting too old to not apply to not do this full time and I thought I've wanted to do it full time all my life and it was a case of but I'll do it now when will I do it so it's also um I've always exhibited in that time um and applied for the sky arts about three times three times before I was accepted on it. And then it was a case of, well, I get to do something I love doing, which is painting. And they tell you on the phone when, cause you get a phone call that says, okay, you're going to be on the show. Mm -hmm. We've put down for this date. It's quite a quick process. Oh, so really? from the time you find out, you've got about a month to prepare to go on um and they obviously they always ask different questions like hey will you be in front of three million people when it airs and you think well okay as long as i don't make a fool of myself i'll be quite happy um so there was questions and i mean i run i run a local art two local art groups anyway so i'm okay in front of people and i'm a person that's i'd like to think quite approachable so, you know, um, cause they also ask, there's a live audience. How will you cope? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, just treat them like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and I suddenly thought I'm gonna have to paint like a live person now and I've done it previously but not for a couple of years where you can sort of you do it every day and you you have to sign a lot of paperwork that says you cannot reveal to people that you're going to be on the show so that meant the people I was thinking right I've got to do a load of live modeling now get a load of people in get them but not tell them that I'm going to be on the show so I had to come up with this idea that I was going to do this painting yeah. project. Oh, <laughs> I see. I'm going to do a load of, you know, portraits in four hours, you know, just as a random idea that I got in my head. And I, I ended up doing about 27 live oh sittings within a month. And I, I worked myself down from, I, I always gave myself four hours but I worked it down to two and a half. Oh my so God. So I knew I could paint a portrait in two and a half hours. Wow. And I thought, and I'd read a load of thing up on it that there would be, you'd have interactions with interviews and the audience members will talk to you while you're painting. And that time is not taken out of the four hours. So if you're oh. being interviewed by the hosts, that carries on deducting minutes from your four hours oh so wow. it doesn't stop so it was it was one of those things where I thought I've got to just yeah. if I can get something doing in a good time that I feel okay with and there was some terrible paintings and there was some good ones <laughs> Because well, it starts at quarter to seven. You have to be at Battersea Art Centre at quarter to seven in the morning. Oh, my gosh. So there was no other way of doing it. Mm -hmm. It was either, there's no way I'd like to go through London traffic in the morning. So it was a case of, yeah, go to a local hotel um, and stay there overnight. And so how did you decide what to take with you? You must well, have done some strategizing about that. Well, in my head, I knew that I was going to, in my head, I thought, this is the one-time opportunity. I'm not going to rely on technology at all. I thought, right, I'm going to paint from life. When do you get to paint celebrity from life? And yeah. me being a watcher at home, sorry about this, my oh, dog. No, that's all right. That's fine. <laughs> sorry about that. We love um, dogs. Me being, me being a watcher at home, um, I always think there's a person there, you know, why aren't they talking to, why aren't they interacting instead of looking on a phone? Even though in hindsight, probably would have been a better idea to use technology. Okay, we've got to because segue into that a little bit because I have done a separate video about technology being used in the program specifically. And also in a more general way in that video was that we do use technology in our studios that's sort of the standard practice. So, um, I mean, among artists that I know, so if you were to go back, what, what piece of technologies would you want with you? I'll probably, I'd probably use my phone or a, and mm -hmm. a tablet. I would probably use it, but it's a it's a one time thing, and I thought, well, I'm just going to make that decision. Do I use it? Yeah. And I think every every brush stroke is how I'm feeling on the day, not controlled. Mm -hmm. So that so yeah, it's it probably could have been a bit of naivety on my part, but it was just that's how I felt yeah. that I wanted to approach it. Yeah. So tell me about. Um... There's lights, there's noise, there's interruptions in terms of the interviews. It sounds like you're just somebody who's able to be extremely open when you decide you're going to commit to something and, and sort of in for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> well, I mean, this program can change artists' lives. You know, it can change their lives. Wow. So there was... There was always an an expectation of thinking, well, you know, if I get through, what could what could come of this? But the day itself, I mean, 
you get there at quarter to seven, you setting up and they're recording you setting up your work and they're setting up the your all your equipment. Um I had a to-do list of all the things remember to breathe was one of them. Um use if it's a big part of the paintbrush, you know, big part mm-hmm. of canvas, use a big mm-hmm. brush. Yeah. So I had a list to look at to keep rem- reminding myself that okay, you can do this. Set up that you think it's four hours straight, and it's not because you have an hour, and then a break, and then you have a lunch, an hour again, and then you have a lunch break, and then an hour, and a break, and then an hour again. You mm-hmm. can work in between those hours, mm-hmm. but there's no sitter there. Oh, there's no sit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, without technology, that might be a problem. <laughs> um, what did what advice would you give to other painters who are thinking of applying? I, I, I think that also, I mean, I'm at an age where I, I know myself. Mm-hmm. I know the person I am, the work I want to produce. If you if you don't feel that you've got the experience and it, you know I mean I'm an experienced painter even I a couple of hours in towards the end had a meltdown where I had to go and cry on a crew member's shoulder because mm. it felt like the pressure was so much yeah and I sort of well, I took my sister along and I looked at her and she was like I'm really proud of what you're doing. And of course, well, that sent me off. I was thinking, oh, no, I'm going to cry. Don't be nice <laughs> I had to, to me. Have a cry. Yeah, yeah um, so it sounds nice. There is, a lot of, there is a lot of pressure on, that you put on yourself as well. Yeah. You know, um, and I mean, when, like, Shirley Ballas didn't choose my piece on camera, mm-hmm. she showed, she chose it off camera. Mm-hmm. So she said, on your piece to go to my son nice which is a win which is a win and afterwards I had a lot of you have to wait around and there's a waiting around as well where you have to do where it's where everyone's finished and mm. you the judges are talking and they're going to pick the free that they want and then there's an element where you're waiting around and the audience members come and talk to you. And I was one of the only ones. And this is this is not a brag, but it was a really nice thing to happen where I had audience members hugging and kissing my cheek and saying, we really we really wanted you to get further through. And you were so cro- close to be getting to the the, far, the free yeah. in that heat yeah. that you were just a whisk, a whisper away. And I had... And I've, I've got a feeling that, like, the crew members liked me because I had about nine, eight interviewers in mm. that four hours, whereas the, the people that I was with refused. And I thought, well, OK, wow. you know, I've got to yeah. keep it. And to be honest, when the show, when I watch the show, because you're always scared how you yeah. will appear on TV, you know, you're scared. Am I going to go home and go, oh, no. People yeah. are going to laugh at me or they're going to think negative negative of me because you I got to be I got to be honest after it finished and we were we were going home there was a I went on to a real downer because you put all that top, that pressure on yourself and it's over in an instant if that makes sense oh gosh yeah oh, oh god it's happened. It took me about two weeks after to pick up a paintbrush. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and it was a case of not feeling rejected, but feeling, what could I have done better? But then mm. it takes a couple of months and you go, well, hang on. I did a painting. There was parts of it I liked, parts of it I wish I'd have done differently. Yeah. Like, I wish I'd have done a full figure instead of a face just the face but at the time you sort of prepare yourself to that's what you're going to go and do so I have questions about that though because I have seen your entry and it's as good as anything that's won the program which (laughs) uh, 
which is anyway, sometimes I watch with the sound <laughs> off. I watch with the sound off. That gives you a clue on how I feel about um, what the judges might be talking about. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, but you, you do have to make a strategic decision about how much real estate you have the time to be engaged in. So your yeah. choice of the head and the shoulders, which I really appreciated because she's anchored in as opposed to just a disembodied head. Sometimes you get a head that's just what I call an island surrounded by oceans painting. That that just drives me a little nuts. All I want is someone to, you know, just take out your paintbrush, give me one line in the other, you know, give me the shoulders. Don't, don't give me a disembodied head. It's just something I don't enjoy. But how, so, oh, so maybe you're suggesting not going bigger, but going different in terms of composition, in terms of the. Yeah. Oh. So I would have probably oh. done her sitting down in the, the chair more so than, and I probably would have gone yeah. more so use of my, um, cause it's here. That's the yeah. piece that got me yeah. going. Yeah. Um, probably would have gone more that size thinking about it I in see. reality. And people are putting their paintings up there that have been rejected. And I had made my piece with the program about it being an entertainment, that they want a lot of variety of work, as well as maybe also ages and, and type of person that's a participant. I thought, Joe, you have to accept that, you know, it's it's the quality of the program is is very excellent, but it's going to be varied because it is an entertainment. But when and so I made my piece with that. And then I joined this group and I saw these paintings coming up that have been rejected for 2024. And my heart is breaking for them. I, I, it's going to, uh, <laughs> I can't even talk about it. Um, it's, the work is so good that it made me think, okay, then it's, it must be just the tossing of a coin at, at some point. But it can't be the tossing of a coin at some point because the quality continues to get better and better and better. I got told that if, to get in, you had to have all three judges like the work. They all had to agree. If two didn't, you were, you're not going through. Okay. And that's what I got told. It has to be all three judges that think it. I mean, when I entered, like I say, I did it on the off chance and I just did a picture that I wasn't I mean I knew there was something good about it I knew there was something that was a changing point to my painting mm -hmm. in that respect it was a very new technique to me I just thought I want to do a picture that proves that I'm worth being and a lot of artists will probably go through that same thing where a lot of words and I think that painting at its best is a poem and I yeah. think that's what I see in your work. It is, yes, you could do it all, you know, like the painting that people can't quite see, I think, behind you, which you're, you're standing on a paint can, which you can see, which if you go to Hannah's site, or maybe I'd be able to put, maybe I'll be able to put it above us here. So you're very capable of doing it. And so then it becomes, well, what about editing? What about choices? What about decisions? And that's where being, um, that's where the poetry kind of speaks to me. And I feel like your piece nailed it. <laughs> so, Thank you. It well, is the same. It is, yeah. If one paintbrush can do the job of 10 st tiny strokes, I, why aren't you using that brush? <laughs> can I use that as a that quote? Me? That's a great quote. Oh, my it, God. It's, it's yeah. right. There's, yes. There's no... There's, uh, I mean... I like to think if it's a, why do it? It's it's that element of if one thing can do the job quicker, easier, better. Why waste it? And like I say, if you you that's another reason why. Obviously, when we use technology, yeah. sometimes we can't stop ourselves from putting those edges in. Yeah, because they're on the they're on the photograph. Whereas. If we can learn a style that we can use for life and we can then use and translate photographs in that style where, like you say, 
the edges you you know what edges to keep what edges to lose Mm -hmm. there's an element where you are getting you can make a photograph based painting feel like you were standing there putting this here because I want to uh, you know the interview will be much shorter than what we've done here and I want to make sure that there's a significant segment that lets people know you know how to reach you I want to make sure that you know this is that this interview is about you not about me that's that's really what I want to that's going to be my intent when it comes to editing editing it and um you know for people to find you you know I hope my channel continues to grow um, you know, I'm dedicated to doing it, but um, I really, uh, I have all confidence that that um, that you will be successful. And and quite frankly, um, it, from in my estimation, you already are. Whether that is coming in financially, that um, we you know we don't know that, but boy, have you got the goods? And and, and <laughs> a lot, you. you do. You just you just do. And so. <laughs> So thank you again. And, you know, I'll put you in my contact book and I wish you all the success. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.